Here in the RC and drone community, we have a thing called FPV. It stands for first person view. Now what first person view is, is basically when you have this little camera and you mount it on the front of your quadcopter or airplane or whatever it is that you're flying, and then the little video transmitter unit that's connected to the camera will spit out a video feed to you on the ground that you can watch either with goggles or with like a video monitor screen. Adding FPV to your aircraft opens up a whole new world. Whole new of fun. Great news, it's getting cheaper and easier to do it. So in this video, what I want to cover is the, the air side of things. We'll talk in another video about uh, inexpensive video goggles or monitor screens. But what I want to talk about is how you can add FPV, a camera and a transmitter unit to your aircraft for as little as $15. And then we're going to talk about some things to consider when buying those little units. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, so glad you're here. Now, like I said, for an FPV setup, what you need to have on your aircraft is a camera so that you can see stuff, and then you need to have a video transmitter unit connected to the camera. And the video transmitter unit is going to spit out a, an analog video signal, and on the ground, you'll have a receiver that will pick up the signal and then send it to your video screen. Now, this is a non-private uh, signal, so anybody else with a receiver can you know, watch uh, through your camera, can see what you're seeing. Most of the time, it's just really cool because then that way you can share what you're seeing with people and they can spectate, which is neat. And in case you don't know, these analog signals, they're not very good quality, but the reason for that is because you want very low latency or delay in the video feed. The cheapest way to add this to your aircraft is to just get one of these little guys. This is an AKK A1 unit, and they call it a three-in-one because they're talking about the camera, the, the video transmitter, and then the antenna. They list all those three separately. And this is all you need. You connect this to a power source, um, which could be its own battery. It could be connected to the main flight battery, or it could be connected uh, maybe to the airplane receiver for a constant five volts of power. And be sure to check the manual and make sure that you're within the voltage range for this little guy. Otherwise, it'll go poof, and then they'll smoke, and then you won't have a video transmitter anymore. And you can get a little setup like this for anywhere from like $15 to $35 or so. And of course, you know, you can get fancier and fancier. Um, I'll have a link uh, to this setup right here because I've used this and it works pretty well, um, as well as maybe some others if you want some more options. And so check the description for those. I've used this little setup to fly many different things through FPV, the Potensic A20, a uh, camera video transmitter and um, and then just stick it on here and I'm like I, on the bat airplane that was actually my very first FPV experience and it was crazy oh, oh. That was so cool <laughs> the wall wing as well as the uh, Force One F100, which was pretty cool because I mounted this kind of like on a boom to get a unique angle. So those are some um, just examples of how you can mount this. And especially if you kind of know what you're doing as far as wiring it up. But again, usually they come with connectors so you can plug it into its own battery if you want to do that. Now let's talk about some things to consider when you're purchasing one of these little units. Because I mean, for the most part, they're all pretty similar, but there are going to be some key differences that I just want to make you aware of so that you you can better pick the one that is going to be best for you. By the way, video transmitter is commonly abbreviated as VTX and camera, if it does need to be abbreviated, it's going to be abbreviated CAM, C-A-M. Let's talk about the antenna. The two main styles of antenna are going to be dipole and omnidirectional antenna, uh, commonly called like a clover leaf style. That's what's most popular on these. Now dipole is just a straight wire thing and is more durable. On the other hand, the clover leaf provides a better overall signal at different flight angles so you don't have to worry so much about you know keeping it in the same position to get a good video signal but it is less durable and more prone to breakage hot tip put a little bit of hot glue at the base where it connects to the actual unit it's gonna make it a lot stronger that way power connectors 
Typically, these connectors are intended to plug directly into a one cell LiPo battery or into an airplane receiver for a constant five volt, usually, uh, power. Some cameras may also come with adapters for this purpose to fit different types of batteries or different types of servo connections. And some come with only bare wires. The bad thing is you have to solder stuff, but if you know how to solder, the good thing is with some basic skills and some basic equipment, you can add whatever kind of connector you need. Transmitting power. The transmitting power of video transmitters, or VTXs, is measured in milliwatts of power. Now, typically, this ranges from 25 milliwatts to, say, 200 milliwatts, but it can be even more than that. But really, I like 25 milliwatts uh, for most cases. Uh, if you're flying like in the open and you're not really going too far, 25 milliwatts is usually just fine, and I think probably towards the upper range would be like 200 milliwatts, but I haven't really like tested this out you know, officially. In any case, one of the downsides of 25 milliwatts is that you're not going to get as much range as, as a higher power, because the higher the power, the more range you get. But keep in mind that what this is doing is basically just blasting this, this uh, signal out of this antenna in all directions. So it's gonna take more power to get a little bit more range. Now the downside to 25 milliwatts is that you don't have as much range as a higher power. But the positive thing about it is that um, you're, well, one is that you're less likely to get uh, interference from, from the signal bouncing back off of walls or metal structures and causing static in your video feed. And then the other thing is that you're not going to be using up as much power in that, that turns into heat so your video transmitter is not going to get as hot because sometimes you can even burn out video transmitters if you have them on when they're on the ground and and there's not air flowing over them to cool them off and the other thing is your battery is going to last longer because it doesn't have to use up as much juice to pump out as much power through the antenna also i guess i should mention that usually the antenna is always connected to these types of units but generally with video transmitters you always want to make sure that the antenna is on the unit before you power it up otherwise it could burn itself out because the antenna is a way of dissipating the energy in the video transmitter and if you don't have that antenna poof you get that magic smoke and it don't work no more. Let's talk about the lens and field of view. Now I'm not super picky when it comes to lenses or image quality per se. Um, with these units, you're generally not gonna get the most amazing lens quality. You'll probably have a lot of fisheye distortion depending on how wide the field of view is, typically like around 120 degrees, which is pretty wide. Um, now the wide field of view is really good, just in case you don't know, because um, you want, especially when you're flying quads and you fly in close into stuff, you want to be able to see what's going on um, kind of like as much as possible, like it, like as though you were on the quadcopter. Because if all you can see is like right in front of you and you're trying to turn, I mean, you just won't have as much awareness of like, what is around you because you might not see a tree or something until you actually hit it. So the wide field of view is good, but the downside is sometimes you get that fisheye distortion. And so around the edges, it'll look kind of warped. And also what that's gonna do is it's gonna make you feel like you're going really fast uh, until you get used to the fisheye distortion and realize like, you know, how close certain objects actually are which is pretty fun. It makes you feel like you're just, just everything just going. Whoa. Lastly, I just want to mention the OSD. OSD stands for on-screen display. And what an OSD does, uh, typically this would be like on a racing quad copter type of deal, is that it's going to um, put information, put data as an overlay on the video feed. So when you're watching it through your video goggles, you will see you know, your, your battery power, uh, how many minutes you've been flying, your throttle position, any number of things right there on the screen. So OSDs are really cool. However, with these little units, you're probably not going to have um, that OSD because I don't think that there are any that have OSD. And also what you kind of have to do is the OSD, the on-screen display information kind of needs to be, it needs to go between the camera and the video transmitter so that way it can be sent out to the video transmitter. So you're not really gonna get the OSD uh, or any kind of flight information like that. So I just wanna let you know. So if you are concerned about battery life or something of that nature, be sure to set a timer before you take off. So that way you'll know when you need to start coming down and kind of how your battery is doing. Most of the time it's not even a big deal, but um, if you're doing maybe longer flights or something, you might wanna think about that.
Well, that's about all I have for you. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of these little video transmitter camera combo units and how you can integrate them into your aircraft so that you can start flying FPV. Like I said, in another video, we're gonna, we're gonna go over some uh, budget options for the video setup of, you know, actually on the ground, being able to see the, the video feed. Um, so, and if you have any suggestions for those or what you'd like to see, leave me a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you for or subscribing if you have already subscribed if not please hit that subscribe button i would super appreciate it and be sure to check the video description for links uh to some that i would recommend that i would personally buy some of these vtx units um, i'll have some links to amazon as well as banggood if you are outside of the u.s and you want to get your hands on one of these thanks for watching and i will see you again very soon